Hey, shalom, 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 Israel. Most high grace. Bless. Officer Ben and I. Are you? I see two below Mississippi cap. We're going to be holding down uh, daily bread this morning. Uh, before we get started, we're going to read our disclaimer. Let's get it. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1. All praise, all praises. All right. So y'all see the name of the, the class this morning. It is called, Why Do We Sin? Why Do We Sin? But before we get into the class, I do want to address that it today is uh, King Day. Um, all praise to the most high. I got the day off. All praise. But, um, you know, when they, when, when, when they, when Esau talk about Martin Luther King, they always want to play the, I, ha I have a dream speech, but why they don't know play this speech right here? Give, give this interview right here. Give me that, uh, video from YouTube that I sent you. Put it up. They always want to play the dream. Little little white boys and black boys and girls get together and have a good time and everything. But they don't ever they don't ever play what Dr. King said before he died in an interview. I play that. No sound, no sound. Run it back. Came as an immigrant. Run it Somehow. Back. What is it about the Negro? I mean, every other group that came as an immigrant, somehow, not easily, but somehow got around it. Is it just the fact that Negroes are black? White America must Paul, see. Paul, you hear, you hear what Esau said? He said, what is it about the Negro? All the other groups came over here, and they was able to make it or whatever. But he said, what is it about the, the Negro? Well, the difference between them and us, we're the Israelites. And the judgments of God is on us. Watch this. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse uh, 29. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 29. Real quick before we get into the clan. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 29. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt grope at noonday Read. as the blind gropeth in darkness. Uh -huh. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. You hear what God said about us? The Esau was like, well, what is it about the Negro? God said we weren't going to prosper in our ways. We don't. And thou shalt be only oppressed and mm -hmm. spoiled evermore. You see that? We were going to be oppressed and spoiled evermore. So uh, I think Dr. King was figuring this out toward the end because he said, you know, he's, he's led his people into a burning building. Now, go back to the video real quick. White America must see that no other ethnic group has been a slave on American soil. Uh, that is one thing that other immigrant groups haven't had to face. The other thing is that the color became a stigma. American society made the Negroes' color a stigma. America freed the slaves in 19, I mean 1863 through the Emancipation Proclamation of Abraham Lincoln, but gave the slaves no land or nothing in reality, and as a matter of fact, to, to get started on. At the same time, America was giving away millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest, which meant that there was a willingness to give the white peasants from Europe an economic base. Paul, Paul, and you hear what he said? Now, you know, when, when they talk about us, they was like, they'd be like, hey, look, you know, we, we worked hard for this. We worked hard for this land. You just, y'all just lazy. Y'all don't work. Listen to what King said. They was giving they was giving Esau millions and millions of acres for free. I forgot what the the name of that uh that that thing was called. I think it was in eighteen hundred or something. They was giving them free land. I forgot the name of it though. All right, go back to the video. Peasants from Europe an economic base, and yet it refused to give its black peasants from Africa who came here involuntarily in chains and had worked free for 244 years in a kind of economic base. And so emancipation for the Negro was really freedom to hunger. It was freedom 
uh, to the winds and rains of heaven. It was freedom without food to eat or land to cultivate, and therefore it was freedom and famine at the same time. And when white Americans tell the Negro to lift himself by his own bootstraps, they don't, o they don't look over the legacy of slavery and segregation. I believe we ought to do all we can and seek to lift ourselves by our own bootstraps. But uh, it's a cruel jest to say to a bootless man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. And many Bob, Bob, you hear know what he say? He say it's a cruel thing to say to a bootless man. A bootless man. They say lift yourself. Uh, you got to work hard. They always tell us that. You got to work hard for, I worked hard, my grandma worked hard for 400 years and all that garbage. But in reality, the, the U.S. government was giving out land, you know. They never, they, they never had to go through all of the atrocities that we went through as a nation of people here in America. Okay, give me that other one. I think it's the same video, but it gets right to the point about he has led his people in a burning building. It's TikTok. Same, it's from the same interview, but it gets right to the point because I'm going to jump right on into the class. All right? You got that? That's it, uh... That dream that I had that day has at many points turned into a nightmare. Mm. Now, I'm not one to lose hope. I keep on hoping. Uh, I still have faith in the future. But I've had to analyze many things over the last few years, and I would say over the last few months. I've gone through a lot of soul searching and agonizing moments. And I've come to see that uh, we have uh, many more difficult days ahead and some of the old optimism was a little superficial, and now it must be tempered with a solid realism. And I think the realistic fact is that we still have a long, long way to go, and that we are involved in a war on Asian soil. Hey, uh, pause. Hey, where, where is that what you said? Left, uh, did I miss it already? What it says, uh, he's, he's led his people into a burning building. Did I miss it? He ain't said it yet? Okay, go back to the video. I might have missed it, yo. I checked and stopped and poison the very soul of our nation. I'm not going to say that all of our problems will be solved if the war in Vietnam is ended, but I do say that the war makes it infinitely more difficult to deal with these problems. Uh, when a nation becomes obsessed with the guns of war, uh, it loses its social perspective and programs of social uplift suffer. This is just a, a fact of history. Okay, okay, so I think I missed it, bro. I think I, I think he said it at the beginning. But anyway, my point was, sorry that, about that, Israel. My point was that Esau always playing the dream. Every year they had the, uh, the uh, what's the brother name, Stevie Wonder song, Happy birthday to you. And um, they always say, you know, his dream, the dream. I remember as a kid, uh, I, I think I was maybe in fifth grade, I had this, this Edomite uh, music teacher, and she had us singing the dream of Martin Luther King. You know, so Esau always talking about the dream, but in reality, they didn't want that. They, they didn't never want that dream to happen, you know. So King figured that out. Toward the end, he said, look, I've led my people into a burning building. One thing King didn't understand, give me that in Habakkuk. Give me that in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. You got to, you got to, uh, now, if if the so-called white man who is Esau, according to the Bible, uh, was a regular nation, you might could talk to him. But listen to what God say. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Bring it up. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. You see that? God say his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. So you're not going to be able to reason with a people like that when their soul is not upright in them, okay? It's all about war, 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 okay? But hey, I just wanted to touch that for a second, y'all. We're going to jump into the title of the class which is called Why Do We Sin? Why Do We Sin? So uh, let's jump right into it. Give me uh, what is sin. Give me uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. The book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. 
The book of First John, chapter 3, verse 4. Bring it out. Whoso, whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Uh -huh. For sin is the transgression of the law. So whosoever commits sin transgress God's law. Sin is the transgression of the law. Now, we read that scripture all the time. But that's, that's some deep stuff right there because you got to think. Christians don't understand that. They think they're not sinning when they eating pig feet. They think they're not sinning when they're going to church on Sunday, worshiping the sun God. Okay, they think they're not sinning. But God say sin is the breaking of God's laws. They don't think. So we read that scripture all the time, and we think it's, it's, it's you know, we take it for granted. We read it all the time. It's not deep, but it is deep to understand what is sin. Read again, uh, soldier. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Uh -huh. For sin is the transgression of the law. So what do you get? So we all know this. What is the wages of sin? Give me that in uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. So if you commit sin, you get wages for that, just like you go to work. If you go to work every day, you're looking for wages. You commit sin, you're going to get wages. Now listen to this. Read that. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Uh -huh. For the wages of sin is death. So if you commit sin and you, if you don't repent, the wages for that is death. Now is it talking about the regular death that all of us got to go do. All of us got to die, right? Give me that Hebrews chapter uh, 9 and verse 27. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. So what death is it talking about? Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Uh -huh. Bring it up. As it is appointed unto men once to die. You see that? It's appointed to all men once to die. So I ain't talking about that death. Watch this. Give me that. Did we finish that? Yep. Read on. But after this, the judgment. But after death is the judgment. Watch this. Give me that in Sirach. I want Sirach chapter 41 and verse 3. Sirach chapter 41 and verse 3. The book of Sirach, chapter 41, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Fear not the sentence of death. Read. Remember them that have been before thee uh -huh. and that come after thee. Read. For this is the sentence of the Lord over all flesh. You see that? So death, God said don't fear the sentence of death because this is the sentence of that God has put on all flesh. So it ain't talking about that death right there. What is it talking about? Give me that in John, chapter 5, verse 29. So the wages of sin is this total damnation. That's what, uh, that's what Christ is talking about. That's what Paul was talking about in Romans chapter 6. It's total damnation. Read that. John chapter 5, verse 29. John chapter 5, verse 29. And shall come forth they that have done good mm -hmm. unto the resurrection of life. Then to the resurrection of life, if you keep the commandments, resurrection of life, read and they that have done evil mm -hmm. unto the resurrection of damnation. You see that? Into the resurrection of damnation. So in, in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. It's talking about total damnation. Watch this. Give me that in uh, Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12 for me real quick. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12. The book of Revelation, chapter 20 and verse 12. Read out. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Read. And the books were open. And the books were open. Read. And another book was open, mm -hmm. which is the book of life. Read. And the dead were judged out of those things mm -hmm. which were written in the books. Read. According to their works. According to their works. So we all going to be judged. You all going to have to stand before the Lord and be judged according to your works. Skip down to... Um, uh, read on, read on. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. And the sea gave up the dead which read. were in it. Read. And death and hell delivered up the dead mm -hmm. which were in them. Read. And they were judged every man according to their works. Read on. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. This is the second death. That's what it's talking about, that second death. That second death. Meaning you're going to be judged. You're going to die. And then you're going to be judged. Okay. And then if you, if you, Kept the commandments of God, uh, everlasting uh, life. If not, everlasting dam damnation. Read on, watch this. Verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was mm -hmm. cast into the lake of fire. Ah, so that's what it's talking about, being cast into that lake of fire. So we all know this. 
So why do we sin? Watch this, watch this. Give me that in 2 Ezra chapter 14 and verse 34. We all know it's a judgment coming, but we still sin. Why is that? 2 Ezra chapter 14 and verse 34. The book of 2 Ezra chapter 14, verse 34. Read it out. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding mm -hmm. and reform your hearts, Read. ye shall be kept alive. Uh -huh. And after death, you shall obtain mercy. You see that after death, because it's appointed for all of us to die. But after death, we want that mercy. We don't. For after death shall the judgment come mm -hmm. when we shall live again. Read. And then shall the names of the righteous be manifest mm -hmm. and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. So why do we sin? We, we all know this, right? We done read the scriptures. We know that it's a judgment for our sin. But yet and still... You hear about all this sin. And why? I'm going to tell you why. Because it's pleasurable. Sin is pleasurable. Give me that in uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 about Moses. And on Hebrews chapter 11 and start at 24. Hold on. Let me get it real quick. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 24. It's pleasurable. It's pleasurable. We like it. We in the flesh. We likes that. Okay. Read that. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. Uh -huh. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Read. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God mm -hmm. than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You see that? The pleasures of sin. The pleasures of sin. Guess what? It's fun. It's fun to holler at some hoes. Right? It's fun. It's fun for you sisters to look at the great jogging pants. It's fun to uh to uh whatever kind of sin you in, you know, you might be watching porn. It's fun to watch the porn, but it's evil and you're gonna be judged for it. Okay. Read it, uh read that part again. Verse 25. Uh -huh. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. So Moses, Moses was born in Pharaoh's house. Moses came up in Pharaoh's house, rich, but he chose rather to suffer with the people of God. Read on. Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin mm -hmm. for a season. To enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So guess what? That's why we say we, it's pleasurable to us. But we got to mortify that thing. We got to mortify that. Watch this. Give me that uh, wisdom of Solomon chapter 9. Well, wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 and verse 15. You in the flesh. You in the flesh. So guess what? Sin is pleasurable to you. Sin is pleasurable to you wisdom of solomon chapter 9 verse 15 wisdom of solomon chapter 9 verse 15 mm -hmm. for the corruptible body mm -hmm. presses down the soul you see that the corruptible body presses down the soul you know in your spirit you know sin is wrong but you're in that flesh and it presses down you know you hear sisters talk about this oh i'm just so tired i'm so tired i'm lonely i'm lonely you've been in the truth three years no man you know, you've been in the truth three years, no man. You used to get in the rod all the time in the world. So after a certain period of time, you, you convince yourself that surely God wants me to get the rod. You know, surely rod is too good not to get. <laughs> Read again. For the corruptible body presses down the soul, mm -hmm. and the earthly tabernacle weigheth down the mind. You see that the earthly tabernacles weigh you down. The earthly tabernacle, the body, the flesh you in, where you down and you commit sin. Okay, did we finish that? No, sir. Okay, read on. That music upon many things. Mm -hmm. You see that? That uses upon many things. Now, give me that. Give me that scripture in Hebrews. I want Hebrews chapter three. And so, as this flesh weigh you down, uh, you 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 uh you don't mortify that member, and then that little bit of little bit of sin that starts in your mind, it'll trick you into thinking it's okay. Watch this. Give me that in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 13. Hold on. Let me get there. Bear with me, soldier. All right. Read that for me. The book of Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. Read it out. But exhort one another daily mm -hmm. while it is called today. Read. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. You see that? That's why we need to exhort one another. So if you ain't counseling, say if you, you are by yourself or whatever, and you, you balance certain things, 
it's good to counsel with somebody that understand what you're going through to get you through unless you'll be read that part again read it again verse 13 verse 13 mm -hmm. but exhort one another daily while it is called today, Read. lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. You see that sin is deceitful. It could trick you. Okay, if you open up your, if you let that little bit in, you'll, 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 you'll your mind uh, will switch and be like, hey, you know what? Surely, surely the God don't want us to be alone. I need a man. Okay, and then next thing you know, you in the world. Getting your back blowed out by men, okay, in the world. And, and, and you brothers, same thing with you. Next thing you know, surely God want me to have a woman. Next thing you know, you in the world hitting all type of holes, okay. Read again. <laughs> Verse 13, one more time. Verse 13, but exhort one another daily mm -hmm. while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Through the deceitfulness of sin. So that sin will trick you. Watch this. Give me that in Romans. Listen to what Paul was saying. Give me that in Romans chapter 7. Hold on. Let me get there. Romans chapter 7. And start at, uh, start at 22. The book of Romans chapter 7, verse 22. Read For I delight in the law of God after mm -hmm. the inward man. Mm hmm but I see another law in my members. Hold on, hold on. First, before you get there, skip up to verse 7. Okay, Romans chapter 7 and verse 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 7. What shall we say then? Mm -hmm. Is the law sin? Mm -hmm. God forbid. So the law is not sin. God's laws is not sin. Read. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. You see that? How do you know sin if you don't know the law? You don't know you're in sin. But by the law, you know, for I had not known lust mm -hmm. except the law had said thou shalt not covet. So guess what? Paul was dealing with lust. OK, he said he didn't know he was in that sin, but till he learned the law. OK, skip down to verse. Uh, read on, read on. Verse eight. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. Mm -hmm. For without the law, sin was dead. So without the law, sin was dead, meaning he didn't know. Okay. Without the law, he didn't know what he was battling. Okay, read on. For I was alive without the law once. Mm -hmm. But when the commandment came, mm -hmm. sin revived mm -hmm. and I died. Read on. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, mm -hmm. I found to be unto death. Read on. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, mm -hmm. deceived me. Mm -hmm. And by it slew me. You see that? See that? What that sin will do? It'll deceive you. That sin will deceive you. If you, if you, uh, that's why the scripture say in uh, Sirach 21, flee, flee from sin. Because if you play with it, it'll deceive you. And next thing you know, we'll see you with an ugly Christmas sweat on. You know, you, you was going hard in this truth. You was going hard in this truth. I seen a brother not long ago, man. I know that was going hard in the truth. And my wife, my rib showed me a picture of him on Facebook. Brother had on a Christmas sweater. I was like, dang, you know. This brother used to be on the street bringing it out. When I first came in, I used to see him going in. And then this past Christmas, I seen a brother with the reindeer outfit on. I was like, damn. <laughs> Good Lord. Come on, IT. All right, uh, where we at, bro? We just finished verse 11. Read 11 again. Verse 11. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, mm -hmm. deceived me, Read. and by it slew me. And by it slew me. Skip down to verse 22. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. For I delight in the law of God mm -hmm. after the inward man. Read. But I see another law in my members, mm -hmm. warring against the law of my mind. See that? that? All of us got that law in our members, warring against our mind. You know, uh, we in the flesh. We know, we know, like brothers, you might, you might, uh, you might battle looking at women, okay? You know it's wrong to look at her, but in your mind, that your mind saying, man, that thing look good, you know? That's that, that's that law of your mind warring against your memory. You know, you know you shouldn't be looking, but you scrolling on that phone and ain't nobody around. 
and you looking, now the phone turned all like this. <laughs> you, 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 sisters, sisters the same way. Ain't nobody around. And you looking at the jogging pass. You all like that. <laughs> ha! <laughs> all right. What, read it again. Uh, so where we at? Verse 23. Uh -huh. But I see another law in my members, mm -hmm. warring against the law of my mind. Read. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. You see that? That 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 stuff you battling in your mind will bring you to the law of sin. Next thing you know, you on the hunt now. You done got in the car. You looking for some hoes. You see what I'm saying? Because you didn't you didn't mortify that thing. You didn't mortify. You got to mortify that. Paul is saying he was battling right here. He was battling. The, the old man was battling. Was that, 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 uh, like they say in, the, in uh, Wisdom of Solomon, that earthly body was press is pressing against the soul. Okay. Verse 24. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. O wretched man that I am, mm -hmm. who shall deliver me from the body of this dead death? Read. Read. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, mm -hmm. but with the flesh, the law of sin. Okay. So in the flesh, you'll serve the law of sin. You got to mortify that thing. Watch this. Give me that in Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 and uh, verse 5. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Uh -huh. Mortify, therefore, your members, mm -hmm. which are upon the earth. You see that? Mortify your members. Whatever you battling in your flesh, you got to mortify that thing. You got to you gotta uh, suppress. You got to kill it. Now, did I send you a, a, a screenshot of Mortify? Maybe I didn't. Uh, I ain't gonna worry. Can you go? Can you Google Mortify for me? Yeah. Let's see. What, what does Mortify mean? All of us have to do that. We have to mortify that 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 thing that's bothering us. That 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 flesh that we balance. Have to mortify that thing. If you if you like to be a whore, you got to mortify. I like I like number two. It says subdue. Subdue the body or its need and desires. You see that? By self-denial or discipline. That's what we got to do. You got to mortify that thing. If you, if, you, if you like porn, guess what? You got to mortify. You got to plug it out. Maybe you need to get rid of your internet. I don't know. You know, get, get some counsel on that thing. You know? If you hanging out with worldly family members, you, you might need to... Come from around them family members, you know, because they might keep you in all type of evil. They gonna keep you in all type of evil. Ain't no might in it. They gonna keep you in all type of evil. Okay, read verse 5 again. Verse 5, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Read. Fornication. Fornication, you got to mortify that. Read. Uncleanness. Because we love fornication. It's fun, right? It's pleasurable. Fornication is pleasurable. But you can't do that if you want the kingdom. Read on. Uncleanness. Uh-huh. Inordinate affection. Read. Evil concupiscence. Mm -hmm. And covetousness, mm -hmm. which is idolatry. Read on. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. You see that? The wrath, if you continue in those things, the wrath of God will come upon you. So you have to mortify that flesh that's causing you to want to sin. Okay, you got to kill it. You got to kill that old man. All right? Give me that in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 27. Whatever you balance. Whatever you balance. Some of us balance all type of stuff. But uh the most the most thing we see in the body here is fornication, you know, some kind of sexual sin. Uh that's the biggest thing we see here. Now it's I'm sure it's all type of evil going on, but 
That's the biggest thing right there, fornication. Uh, you'll have a brother in the body been been slamming hams, as they say, been slamming hams with a sister for years and, and, and sat there on the Sabbath and don't say nothing. That's some evil stuff right there. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. Bring it out. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Read again. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. That's what we got to do. You got to you gotta bring your body into subjection. Bring your body into subjection. Like some of you brothers might be uh, uh, addicted to uh, the, the lotion. <laughs> brothers might be addicted to the lotion. You got to bring your body into subjection. Bring your body into subjection. Don't be, you got to, you know, when you feel that, that urge to want to watch the porn, you got to, you got to subdue that thing. You got to bury it. You can't give your body, you can't give your body what it won't. Okay. Read again. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Mm -hmm. Lest that by any means, mm -hmm. when I have preached to others, mm -hmm. I myself should be a castaway. Well, you see what Paul was saying? He, he had to bring his body into subjection because he out here teaching and yourself you'll be a hypocrite you know what i'm saying you'll be a castaway because you didn't bring your body into subjection now watch this give me that in second samuel <clears throat> second samuel chapter 11 and verse 2 about david when david saw bathsheba second samuel chapter 11 and verse hold on let me get this soldier 11 and verse, start at verse 2. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 11, verse 2. Bring it out. And it came to pass in the evening tide that David arose from off his bed uh -huh. and walked upon the roof of the king's house. Read. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. Mm -hmm. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. So what should David have done right there? He saw Bathsheba over there on the rooftop washing herself. You know what you should have did? You know what David should have did? He should have turned away his eyes like Job. Say, hold that right there. Give me that in Job. Give me that in Job chapter 31. Job chapter 31. Is it is it one? All right, read that for me. But guess what? He didn't turn away his eye. So guess what he when you don't, when you don't mortify that thing and don't turn away your eyes, guess what you're gonna do? You know, my eyes, your sins start with your eyes. You know, you, you see it and you want it. <laughs> I read it. Job chapter 31, verse 1. Bring it out. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Read. Why then should I think upon a maid? You see that? You sure? I'm sure David knew this law right here. Make a covenant with your eyes. Don't look upon a maid. Read on. For what portion of God is there from above? Mm -hmm. And what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Mm -hmm. Is not destruction to the wicked? You see that? So he's saying, you hear what Job's saying? What what portion am I going to get if I look at these maids? Okay. What portion am I going to get? Now, Babylon the Great is hard not to look at women because they everywhere. But you got to you got to mortify that thing. You got to you got to bear that not to look at them. Okay. Now go back to David in um 2 Samuel chapter 11, read verse 2 again. 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 2. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the evening tide that David arose from off his bed mm -hmm. and walked upon the roof of the king's house. Read. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. So he, he, did, he messed up right there. He, the woman was very beautiful to look upon. He didn't turn away his eye. So guess what he going to do? Read on. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. And David sent and inquired after ah, the woman. Ah, see, now there you go. You didn't turn away your eyes. Now you you sending for it like hey what's up, what's going on with you you know, but if you to if you to turn away your eyes, you wouldn't be sending for them, okay just like some of you sisters, uh if you turn away your eyes from the great jogging pants it won't be going so it won't be getting so deep in your mind and getting mesmerized you know, you want to see what's in the pants now and next thing you know legs like this. <laughs> but all because you didn't mortify that. You didn't you didn't you didn't suppress that thing. Okay, where we at? Verse three. Read on. 
And David sent and inquired after the woman. Read. And one said, Is mm -hmm. not this Bathsheba, mm -hmm. the daughter of Eliam, mm -hmm. the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So he knew the woman was married. David knew the woman was married. But did he stop then? Because that your eyes, your eyes, if he'd have turned away his eyes, he probably wouldn't have went after it. But he went out the headlong. Because she was very beautiful. She had to be bad too. We you know. And David sent messengers and took her, mm -hmm. and she came in unto him, mm -hmm. and he lay with her. Oh, I'm sure she wanted to do it, because it don't say nothing about she forced him. I mean, he forced her. So Bathsheba was evil as hell herself. You know, she she wanted to do it too. She seen the man, he, he a powerful man. So she attracted to that power too. We don't know. For she was purified from her uncleanness. We don't know. And she returned unto her house. Mm-hmm. And the woman conceived and sent and told David mm -hmm. and said, I am with child. Now, bro, this sounds like some Maury stuff. It's some Maury stuff right here, ain't it? He didn't, he, he, David didn't hit it. Now he didn't got the woman pregnant. Got the, the, the married woman pregnant. Dang. You know. And David sent to Joab, saying, send me Uriah the Hittite. Mm -hmm. And Joab sent Uriah to David. Mm -hmm. And when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did. You see that? Man, that's some evil stuff right there. Somebody hitting your wife, and you don't even know it. And a lot of that stuff happened in the world today. The brother, the brother that's hitting your wife know you. You don't know him. <laughs> he tearing your wife up, tear her up, destroyed her, and murdered her. <laughs> we don't. And how the people did. And mm -hmm. how the war prospered. Now he up there making small talk. How was the war? How's everything going? Knowing you just got to destroy my wife. That's some evil stuff right there, bro. Read on. And David said to Uriah, go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed of the king's house. And there followed him a mess of meat from the king. So look, he trying to, now David, now all he had to do is turn away his eyes from the beauty of a woman. Like Job said. But he didn't do that. So he went in, and now he's getting into all type of other sin. All type of evil. We don't. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house mm -hmm. with all the servants of his lord mm -hmm. and went not down to his house. Read. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, mm -hmm. David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Mm -hmm. When thy didst thou not go down unto thine house? We don't. And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, mm -hmm. and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Read. Shall I then go into mine own into mine house mm -hmm. to eat and drink and to lie with my wife? So you hear Uriah? This brother was down. This brother was loyal. And David was tearing his wife up, man. That's some evil God stuff. Damn. That's some evil stuff right here. He he said, What I about to go? Home and eat and lay with my wife when my brother's at war? No, I ain't doing that. Read on. As thou livest and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. Read. And David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. Read. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. Mm -hmm. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, mm -hmm. and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord. So now... So that didn't work the first time. So now David called a man back, got him drunk. <laughs> he wanted him to go lay with his wife. This is some Maury stuff. <laughs> this is some Ricky Lake Christ. stuff. How many of y'all remember Ricky Lake? <laughs> it's some Ricky Lake stuff right here. Uh, what's the other dude? Uh, old, old uh, talk show. Donahue. Donahue. Y all, y all, you got to be over 40 to remember Donahue. <laughs> And you millennials are like, what, what, what is that? What is that? What is Ricky Lake? <laughs> All right, where we at, bro? The bottom of 13. Okay, read, uh, read it from the top again. I'm sorry. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. And when David called him, he did eat and drink before him. Mm -hmm. And he made him drunk. Mm -hmm. And at even, he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord's house. Read. And went not down to his house. Read. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote, a letter to Joab, and sent it by the hand of Uriah. Read. And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, mm -hmm. and retire ye from him, 
that he may be smitten and die. You see that? Now, now just because he ain't turn away his eye, now it's turning into murder. You see that? He he tried to do he tried to scheme, tried to get him to lay with his wife to, to make like it's his baby. He gonna say, Well, you lay with her, that's your baby. You know. But now since he went lay with his wife, he gonna he gonna now he gonna kill the brother. Hey, hey bro, come on now, dog. Murder. You know? Verse 16. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city mm -hmm. that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. Three. And the men of the city went out and mm -hmm. fought with Joab. Mm -hmm. And there fell some of the people of the servants of David. Mm -hmm. And Uriah the Hittite died also. You see that? Now the brother dead. So David had the brother killed because he didn't want this thing to be found out that he was had his wife pregnant. That's some evil stuff right here. Then, if you read on, read the history on, he went on and took the brother's wife. Now watch this. Okay, skip down to uh, verse 25. Verse 25. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab, mm -hmm. Let not this thing displease thee, mm -hmm. for the sword devoureth one as well as another. Mm -hmm. Make thy battle more strong against the city, and read. overthrow it, read. and encourage thou him. Mm -hmm. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, mm -hmm. she mourned for her husband. Read. And when the morning was passed, mm -hmm. David sent and fetched her to his house. Mm -hmm. And she became his wife mm -hmm. and bare him a son. Read. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. You see that? That thing displeased the Lord. And, of course, David was judged. When you finish reading, I think the, the, the son died, okay, because of that evil that David had done. All right, now. Give me uh the book of Susanna. The book of Susanna. We don't so you gotta mortify that thing. You gotta turn away your eyes. If David would have turned away his eyes, he probably wouldn't have went into all of that right there. Okay, uh Susanna. Start at the book of Susanna, uh, verse one. The history of Susanna, verse one. Mm -hmm. There dwelt a man in Babylon called Joachim, mm -hmm. and he took a wife whose name was Susanna. The daughter of uh, Chelsea, a very fair woman, mm -hmm. and one that feared the Lord. Read. Her parents also were righteous and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. Read on. Now Joachim was a great rich man mm -hmm. and had a fair garden, mm -hmm. joining unto his house, and to him resorted the Jews, because he was more honorable than all others. Read. The same year were appointed two of the ancient of the people to be judges. Read. Such as the Lord spake of, mm -hmm. that wickedness came from Babylon from ancient judges mm -hmm. who seemed to govern the people. Read on. These kept much at Joachim's house, mm -hmm. and all that had any suits in the law came unto them. Read on. Now when the people departed away at noon, Susanna went into her husband's garden to walk, mm -hmm. and the two elders saw her going in every day and walking so that their lust was inflamed toward her. You see that? Now, these two elders saw Susanna. Susanna was a beautiful woman, okay? These two judges of the people seen Susanna in the garden watching herself, okay? Did they turn away their eyes? No, they didn't mortify. They didn't mortify that day, okay? Both of them was evil as hell, okay? Read uh, verse 8 again. Verse 8, and the two elders saw her going in every day and mm -hmm. walking, so that their lust was inflamed toward her, mm -hmm. and they perverted their own mind mm -hmm. and turned away their and turned away their eyes. So they what they do? They perverted their own mind and turned away their eyes from the law. They turned away their eyes from the law, just like uh, just like David did. He he knew the law was saying don't look upon a maid, but he turned away his eyes from the law, and then bam, it turned into. Uh, adultery and murder, okay? Read on. That they might not look unto heaven, mm -hmm. nor remember just judgments. Read on. And albeit they both were wounded with her love, mm -hmm. yet durst not one show another his grief. Read. For they were ashamed to declare their lust. So they were ashamed because they knew it was evil. Read on. That they desire to have to do with her. Read. Read. Yet they watch diligently from day to day to see her. So now they obsessed with the sisters. They watch it from day to day. They over there looking at the woman from day to day, showing up, watching her. Read on. And one said to the other, 
Let us now go home, for it is dinner time. Mm -hmm. So when they were gone out, they parted the one from the other, and turning back again, they came to the same place. Read. And after that, they had asked one another the cause. Mm -hmm. They acknowledged their lust. Mm -hmm. Then appointed they a time both together when they might find her alone. You see that now? Now they really getting evil just because they didn't turn away their lust. Now they they both were supposed to be went home for dinner. And then next thing you know, both of them see each other coming back. Like, hey, hey what, what, what you back for? What you back for? Hey, man, you know, hey, man, I was looking at Susanna. <laughs> you know, the other brother like, man, I was looking at her too. So, look, let me, let's, let's both hook up and look at her at this time. That's some evil stuff. That's some evil, evil stuff right there. These men judges of the law. Okay. Verse 15. Verse 15. And it fell out. Mm -hmm. As they watched a fit time, mm -hmm. she went in as before with two maids only, mm -hmm. and they were and she was desirous to wash herself in the garden, uh -huh. for it was hot. Read, and there was nobody there save the two elders mm -hmm. that had hid themselves and watched her. Hold up, now there's some evil stuff right here. You got two old men, <laughs> judges, hiding behind the bushes, looking at the sister. Now that's some evil stuff right there, bro. That's some evil. That's that's. That's what that sin to do, it, it deceive you. The sin to deceive you so bad, now you hide behind the bushes <laughs> trying to look at somebody. The sin that then got you, that took over your body, now the sin is in, 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 in overdrive. Now you hide behind the bushes, peeping through the windows and stuff. Read on. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. Then she said to her maids, bring me oil and washing balls mm -hmm. and shut the garden doors that I may wash me. Ah, so them, them wicked elders, they, they were waiting on her to get that oil and washing balls. <laughs> That's some evil stuff, man. Read on. And they did as she bade them mm -hmm. and shut the garden doors mm -hmm. and went out themselves at privy doors to fetch the things that she had commanded them. Read. But they saw not the elders because they were hid. Mm -hmm. Now when the maids were gone forth, the two elders rose up and ran unto her, saying. Mm -hmm. and now, so after they, after the maids was gone, closed the door, they hop out the bushes. Ah! <laughs> That's some evil stuff, bro. Hop out the bushes. And what they say to Susanna? Read on. Behold, the garden doors are shut mm -hmm. that no man can see us, mm -hmm. and we are in love with thee. And we in love with you. That's some... That lust had took over them. It, it was in. It was driving they driving the body, okay, because they weren't following the commandments. Read on. Therefore, consent unto us mm -hmm. and lie with us. Now he's saying, look, y'all, you come lie with both of us. If if you don't lie with us, look, see what they're gonna do. Read on. If thou wilt not, we will bear witness against thee mm -hmm. that a young man was with thee, mm -hmm. and therefore thou didst send away thy maids from thee. You see that now, because they didn't turn away their eyes from Susanna. Now they're saying they're going to bear false witness again. Now it's going into all type of evil, trying to murder the sister. Read on. Then Susanna sighed and said, I am straightened on every side. Mm -hmm. For if I do this thing, it is death unto me. Read. And if I do it not, I cannot escape your hands. Read. It is better for me to fall into your hands mm -hmm. and not do it mm -hmm. than to sin in the sight of the Lord. You see that? She said, look, it's better for me to not lay with y'all and die that way, okay, in the sight of the Lord. So what they do then? Read on. With that, Susanna cried with a loud voice, and the two elders cried out against her. Mm -hmm. Then ran the one and opened the garden door. Read. So when the servants of the house heard the cry in the garden, they rushed in at a privy door to see what was done unto her. Mm -hmm. But when the elders had declared their matter, the servants were greatly ashamed. For nope. there was never such a report made of Susanna. Right. So now, if you finish reading, and we ain't gonna read the rest of it, but uh, she she not she didn't lay with the the elders. They they kind of had her own trial, and then uh, I think it was uh, was it um, Daniel? Daniel rose up, and then of course the, the elders got into the end. They got put to death for lying. They trying to kill her. Okay, give me that to Sirach, chapter twenty one. Sirach chapter 21 and verse 2. Sirach chapter 21 and verse 2. Hold on, let me get there real quick. Sirach 21 and verse 2. 
The book of Sirach, chapter 21, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Bring it out. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. You see that? So guess what you got to do? You got to flee from that sin. Just like them, the, the elders saw Susanna, they knew where it was going. You got to flee from that. Mortify your members. Read on. For if thou comest too near it, mm -hmm. it will bite thee. You don't want to play around with that sin because it's going to bite you. You know, the teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion, mm -hmm. slaying the souls of men. Read. All iniquity is as a two-edged sword, the wounds whereof cannot be healed. You see that? All iniquity is like a two-edged sword. Like, you might you might uh, start off with a lie, but it might end up to something bigger. So it's best to not even play around with it. Okay, dumb. Because the brothers didn't turn away their eyes from looking at the maids, then it turned into all type of evil. Okay, now go back to uh, go back to Colossians chapter three. Go back to Colossians chapter three, and then we're gonna end it. Colossians chapter three, and start at five again. The book of Colossians chapter three. Verse 5. Bring it out. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Fornication, mm -hmm. uncleanness, inordinate affection, Re? evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Re? For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, mm -hmm. holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, Humbleness of mind, mm -hmm. meekness, long suffering, mm -hmm. forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. All right. So now skip over to um, I want Ephesians chapter four and verse twenty-two. Ephesians chapter four, verse twenty-two. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, and verse 22. Mm -hmm. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, mm -hmm. the old man. You see that? If you if you was involved in all that evil back in the day, now you repent it. You know you Israel, you repent it. Now you gotta you can't play around with it. You gotta flee from sin. That's from the face of a serpent. Read on. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Read. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Read. And that ye put on the new man, mm -hmm. which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You see that? Put on that new man, that new woman, okay? That's after God is in straight holiness. You don't wanna you don't wanna play around with that sin, because it'll turn into something else. I mean it, one sin will turn into a bigger sin. Just like David, he, he he went to looking at the sister, sinning, looking at her, and then that transformed into sinning for her. And then Committing adultery with her, and then it turned into killing her husband. That's some evil stuff. All right, verse, what we at, verse 25? Yes, sir, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, putting away lying, mm -hmm. speak every man truth with his neighbor. Read. For we are members one of another. Read. Be ye angry and right. sin. That's all I wanted on that. Uh, I think I'm going to end it right there, Israel. Um, so the name of the class, Why Do We Sin? Because it's pleasurable. And that, and that body is pressing against, that corruptible body is pressing against our soul. But how do you fix that? You got to apply the scripture. One, one more thing, one more thing. I'm going to show you something. Give me Matthew chapter 4. How did Christ, how did Christ fight that body by applying the scriptures? I want Matthew chapter 4. And hold on, hold on real quick. I didn't write it down. But I just want to show you how to fight. How to fight the flesh. Matthew chapter 4 and verse, uh, uh, start at verse, verse 1. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Bring it out. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness mm -hmm. to be tempted of the devil. So Christ was being tempted of the devil. Read on. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, mm -hmm. he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, mm -hmm. command that these stones be made bread. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said. Ah, so now he's being tempted, right? He said, If you're the Son of God, I know you're hungry. Make these stones bread. But what did Christ do? How did he fight that temptation? Read that, verse 4. 
But he answered and said, it is written, mm -hmm. man shall not live by bread alone, Read. but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You see that? So you got to, what, what scripture he was going to? He was quoting Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, on fighting that temptation. All right, watch this. Skip down to, uh, read, on, read on verse 5. Verse 5, then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple mm -hmm. and saith unto him, if thou be the son of God. Cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. So how did, how did Christ come back to this? Verse 7? Jesus said unto him, mm -hmm. it is written again, mm -hmm. thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. See that? So how, how Christ was fighting the tempter is with the scriptures. That's how we got to do. We got to fight. So David saw saw the, the sister washing herself, Bathsheba washing herself, Job 31 said, hey, look, don't look up on a maid, Sirach 9 5, don't look up on a maid. I can't do that. I got to turn away my eyes. Watch this. Read on. Verse 8, mm -hmm. again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. So Satan said, look, all these things, I'm going to bless you with all these things. All you got to do is worship me. How did Christ respond? Read. Then said Jesus unto him, mm -hmm. Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, I know a lot of y'all said, Well, how, how can I fight? I mean, ain't nobody going through this. What I'm going through. Give me that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. That the one to say, um, Everything coming to me. I read that. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Mm -hmm. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. So guess what? Everything you going through, somebody else already going through. How you fight that temptation, you got to apply the scriptures. Read on. But God is faithful, mm -hmm. who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Read. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So that you got to ask yourself, okay, God said he going to make a way for me to escape. What's that way? A lot of time it could be counsel. Make sure you counsel with somebody that's uh, got more experience than you and uh, apply the scriptures. Counsel, that person you counsel with could show you the scriptures that you need, and then you can get out of that situation. But with that, Israel, we're going to go ahead and end it. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models.